Some argue that the main aim of science is to create a theory that can predict everything. The standard model has a bold purpose of describing all of matter and its forces. It's still only a baby theory and a long way away from explaining everything, but so far it is a great way of explaining and understanding visible matter and three out of the four forces. The reason particle physics is so complex is because there are so many properties, like mass, charge and spin just to name a few, and each of these will order them in a different way. To get your head around this, we need to remember what we've learnt when we were 13 years old or so. Everything is made up of atoms. Atoms are then split into three parts, electrons, protons and neutrons. Now these are the building blocks of all matter, well, visible matter anyway. One of the things particle physics like to do is to see what is the smallest possible form of matter. The word atom itself is originally from the Greek word for indivisible. Of course, J.J. Thompson and Ernest Rutherford proved that atoms can be split into smaller sources of matter. Then we got even smaller with quarks. So like chemistry, we have elements and we have compounds. In particle physics, we have elementary particles, electrons and quarks, and composite particles like protons and neutrons. Elementary particles are ones which have no substructure, or at least nothing that theoretical physicists can come up with and then agree on. This is actually where string theory comes in, but that's for the next video. As been mentioned before in quantum electrodynamics, there are 17 confirmed particles in the standard model, with some that we're still waiting on. There are three sections, quarks and leptons are both fermions, and then there's bosons. There are six quarks, six leptons, and five bosons. The quarks are up, down, charm and strange, top and bottom. The leptons are electron, electron neutrino, muon, muon neutrino, tau, tau neutrino. And then there's the bosons, gluon, photon, Z boson, W plus and minus boson. Sometimes the Z and W bosons are put together and then they like to put in the Higgs boson underneath. We have looked at quarks and electrons in lessons before, so we are going to focus on the bosons here. Bosons are responsible for creating force, the fundamental forces of the universe no less. However, these bosons can only describe three out of the four of the forces, and they are the electromagnetic force, the strong nuclear force, and the weak nuclear force. All of these bosons create fields in which all matter passes through, and they are also responsible for carrying the forces between matter particles. Remember the force carriers from the first video? There are five bosons and one that is still open for debate at this point that we are going to talk about. Each force has a force carrier associated with it. These force carriers are what interact with atoms, quarks and leptons. Photons, which are responsible for the electromagnetic force. Gluons, which are responsible for the strong nuclear force. There are actually eight gluons and they stick quarks together. They can also stick themselves together and it means that they can't do much outside the nucleus. The Z and both W bosons are responsible for the weak nuclear force and they are mainly found in beta decay, but don't be fooled by its name. The weak force is not actually weak, it is stronger than gravity, which is the weakest force. The W boson acts to push heavy bosons away, like electrons, while the Z boson pushes lighter leptons away, like the neutrinos. All of the bosons have no charge except for the W, which has a plus and a minus charge, which is why there's two of them. Gluons and photons actually have no mass and so they travel at the speed of light according to general relativity. This actually leads to an interesting point about travelling at the speed of light. If for some reason we found a way to go faster than the speed of light, if it involved us physically moving at the speed of light, the gluons holding our atoms together wouldn't be able to keep up and then keep together our protons and neutrons. Our atoms would simply explode. But first, you have to get to the speed of light and beyond. Good luck with that. There are a few bosons which many physicists think exist but have eluded detection. The Higgs boson, which was thought to have been found but had its doubts cast over it, which is the boson that apparently gives particles matter. 
There's also the graviton, which is the particle that controls gravity. The standard model itself requires the Higgs boson, as mass plays a big part in it. However, it does not require the graviton, as it doesn't even consider gravity as one of the fundamental forces. Something I haven't really talked about in detail yet is spin. This is because it is wonderfully weird. Let me give you an example. In the ordinary world, if we have a children's roundabout, when a force is applied it will spin quicker and then if a force is applied in the other direction it will then slow. This is the same as spin in one way, that it spins. The idea of classic spin can give us a decent understanding of spin, but it only takes us so far. Spin in the quantum world is different and not always as it seems. But yeah, that's about it. The only similarity they have is that a roundabout spins and an electron spins. The wonderful weird thing about spin as a particle property is that there is no way of changing it. It will always be the same. Now just in case you thought it had anything to do with the electromagnetism, which is not an unreasonable assumption to make, it doesn't. Whether the particle is charged or not, it can still have spin. Now fermions will all have half integer spins, that is one of the rules for being fermions. While bosons will all have integer spins. This means that fermions can have a half, three halves, five halves, etc, but never one, two or three. So I'm going to do my best now to recap everything into one table that includes all the quarks and leptons information from the last two videos. So, there are six quarks. Up, down, charm, strange, top, bottom. Who all have their masses, charge and spin. There are also six leptons. Electron, electron neutrino, muon, muon neutrino, tau and tau neutrino which all have their own masses and charge and spins. There are then five bosons, the gluon, the photon, the Z boson, the W plus and minus boson, which all have their own mass, charge and spin as well. Quarks and leptons are both fermions. Fermions are split into three generations. Generation one contains the up, the down, the electron, and the electron neutrino. Generation 2 contains the charm, the strange, the muon, and the muon neutrino. Generation 3 contains the top, the bottom, the tau, and the tau neutrino. Generation 1 can form together to make hadrons. Generation 2 can form together to make unstable hadrons. Generation 3 isn't much different to 2, except the top quark is so unstable that it only lasts for an instant. We only know that the top quark exists because of its decay products. All the fermions and the Z and W bosons are all affected by the weak nuclear force. All the quarks and some of the gluons are affected by the strong nuclear force. Gluons and quarks have colour. While quarks can only have one out of three colours, gluons can have up to six colours. The colours are red, green, blue, anti-red, anti-green, and anti-blue. There are eight gluons. Six that have two colours, one that has four, and one that has all six colours. All the quarks, the electron, the muon, and the tau, and the W bosons are all affected by the electromagnetic force, which is caused by photons. Up, charm, and top all have a charge of plus two thirds. Down, strange, and bottom all have a charge of minus one third. Electrons, muons, and tau all have a charge of minus one. W plus and W minus have a charge of plus one and minus one, respectively. So far so good? Nope. Even though the standard model is the best at describing the world at the moment, it doesn't explain the whole picture. The theory only includes three out of the four fundamental forces and doesn't answer anything about dark matter, or what happened at the Big Bang, or what happens in black holes. It doesn't explain why there are such variations in the masses of generations. There are still a lot of questions. Where is the Higgs boson? 
Hopefully it's in a couple of videos time. But that whole area is very unclear about if we found it or not. You see why this theory is very incomplete. So that is the conclusion of the standard model with the conclusion of leptons and quarks too. They are complex and to understand them fully we would have to have at least a year in university. There are of course formulas that no one can understand without a year in physics and here they are. The first part is all about the kinetic energies and self-interactions of the gauge boson. The next part is all about the kinetic energies and the electroweak interactions of fermions. The next part is all about bosons but not the gluons. The next part is all about the interactions between quarks and gluons. And the last part is all about fermion masses and the Higgs boson. But don't worry about that, just keep watching these lessons. Thanks very much for watching. See you next time.